Hello, 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 hello. Hello, <laughs> you were asleep. <laughs> hello and welcome. If you are here watching, do pop a comment um, in the comments to say hello uh, so that I know I'm not completely talking to myself. And this is the horrible, embarrassing, awkward bit where you don't know if anybody's watching you and you kind of sit here twiddling your thumbs, just wondering. Eric's watching me, aren't you? When I was staring out the garden. <laughs> uh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, hello, Gypsy. Hello, Penelope. Uh, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, hello, Lisa. You're not going to say hello to people. <laughs> Eric says hello. He's given up eating his carrot. He says hello. Hello, L hello, Karen. Hello, Lani. Hello, Jackie. All from all over the other side of the world in Canada. Hello, Kerry. Hello, Martina. Um, yeah, the start of lives is really, really bad. You don't know whether to just sit there and stare blankly at the camera. <laughs> as tumbleweeds come past or talk like I'm doing, like a complete loony. <laughs> We'll go for the latter. Hello, Sylvia. Hello, Karen. Hello, Tessa. Hello, Luna. Did I say good morning earlier? It's not morning. It's good afternoon here. It depends what part of the world you're in, really. It's the afternoon in the UK. Hello, Luna. Hello, Sue. Lots of lovely people. Hello. Um, Lisa's cat's called Eric as well. It's a good name for pets. I like pets with human names. <laughs> Hello, Eva, over in Switzerland. And hello, Joanne. Please talk. Yeah, it is a bit, you don't know what to do, do you? And they're just sitting there looking at you. A little bit creepy. <laughs> hello. Di hello, Helen. Hello, Natalie. Hello, Caroline. Um, welcome, really. Thank you all for joining me. <laughs> hello, Sue, the dedicated druid. And Eric's so impressed he's decided to go to sleep. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Heather. Wow, lots of lovely people. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, Liam in the Netherlands. Gosh, I hope I can keep you entertained. <laughs> so for those that don't know, I'm Rachel Patterson. I'm a witch and a published author. I've been very lucky to have had Mm, num, num, number of books 17 thank you 17 books published so far uh today i want to talk about my 18th book hello dawn hello zinia hello jane um as always each new book is really exciting it doesn't matter how many books you write i don't think each new one is very exciting hello sharon this one's a little bit different for me. Um, curative magic. Uh, hello, Michelle, for the first time. Welcome, welcome. This is curative magic. I'm not going to sell the book throughout, I promise. <laughs> I'm going to talk about some of the contents and about the magic that went into it. I'm going to be working some magic from it as well. If anyone has any questions about the book, about myself, about witchcraft in general, please do pop it in the comments and I will do my very best to answer them. Uh, hello, Gillian. This is, it's a big book, nice big thick book, makes an excellent doorstop, <laughs> little bit thick for propping up tables, but makes a nice doorstop. Oh, it's a nice thick book. And I must admit, they have, the, I do like the cover. The cover's been done very really nicely. I have nothing to do with the cover. That's all out of, all out of hand. Uh, Martina ordered yours last October. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> There's some patience for you. <laughs> uh, it is due out on the 1st of September, but I know some people have been receiving early copies. So that's all very exciting. Hello, Jane and the Westies in a drizzly Wolverhampton. Yeah, it has been a bit overcast here in the south of England today, but the sun has just come out, although it is quite windy. Uh, hello, Sue. So, Curative Magic, A Witch's Guide to Self-Discovery, Care and Healing. This is uh, quite a personal book, really. It started out with some very, very personal stuff, but it's, it sort of went off in different directions, really. Um, it started, actually, 
Oh, hello, Jess. It started with the Flower Magic Oracle cards. And the idea was to write a book based on flower magic. And that's how it started. How it's ended up is really quite far removed from that completely. So I'll read the back bit because it makes me laugh. Um, hello, Lexi from sunny Cornwall. Oh, totally jealous, Lexi. I love Cornwall. Um, hello, Michelle. And hello, Lizzie. Wow, lots of lovely people. Thank you so much for joining me. So I'll read the back. It does make me laugh. Join Renowned. Now, I wasn't sure if that's good or bad to be renowned, really. <laughs> Kitchen Witch, Rachel Patterson, as I, she shares hundreds of her own personal spells, recipes and remedies for natural healing. Learn how to release emotional blocks and use the powerful energies of nature to support self-care for ailments and challenging life experiences such as guilt, worry, grief, low self-esteem, obstacles and blockages, sleep issues, Menzies and menopause, transitions and changes, anxiety, stress, depression, panic attacks and fear. And I will be absolutely honest with you, I have experienced all of those. I wouldn't actually feel very comfortable writing about them if I hadn't experienced them myself. So much as it perhaps seems when you see someone that stands up in at Witch Fest or whatever festival and talks to a room full of people, that they're totally full of competence and their life is perfect and nothing ever goes wrong. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> so I have actually experienced all of the issues that I write about in this book. But something that occurred to me was that as a witch, we actually have a little bit of an advantage because we have our witch's toolkit, if you like, to help us with these things. Now, if you are struggling with any of those issues and really struggling, please, please seek medical help. There is help out there um, in whatever form, but please don't struggle on your own. There is help out there. Um, but this works with magic. This is helping ourselves as a witch from our magical toolkit to sort some of those issues out. And lots more people jumping on. Hello, Deborah. Hello, Adele. Hello, Leslie. Um, Joanne, thank you for being open. Yeah, I hopefully this is part of what this book is, Joanne. I, I, I don't really share my dirty washing on social media, but I think it's important to share when we're dealing with issues if we've learnt some way of helping or helping cope with them. Um, hello, Jane, you need this book. <laughs> I'll just push it through the internet for you. <laughs> Uh, Lisa, hello from the US. Who is your companion chiller? He's our dachshund and he's called Eric and he likes to sit in on all of the talks for some reason. Generally, he sleeps throughout, which actually is a good thing because he's quite a bundle of energy otherwise. But he likes to sit and watch for some reason. Um, Sharon, it sounds fantastic. I teach adults and I know it well. Hopefully it is helpful or going to be helpful to people. Um, Hello, Claire. Hello, Harmony. But it has come from a place of self-experience. So these are some of the things that I worked with and still work with. Um, I do struggle a little bit with bits and pieces, particularly in the last few months where we've been on lockdown. Anxiety and things like that are bound to rear. And I am still working through the menopause six years into it. But as a witch, we do have uh, things that we can work with to deal with it. So we'll have a little look. Hello, Mary in the US. Um, Sylvie, definitely the book I look forward to read. Could also help me in my work as a caretaker. Yes, yes, absolutely. There are lots of bits and pieces. Uh, there is a chapter on each of the different issues and each chapter runs in the same sort of format. So for um, each issue, you will find meditations, rituals, spell working. There's also some essential oils, uh, incenses. There aren't any herbal remedies as such because I believe how they are powerful. Herbal remedies are powerful. And I think if you want to go down that route, and I encourage you to do so, um, see a qualified herbalist. They are powerful and they can interact with medication if you're already on over-the-counter medication. They can also be very, very dangerous if you have other underlying health problems. So herbal remedies definitely do seek a 
advice from a qualified herbalist. But this is really all about working magic, although there are some herbal teas in there. Um, Martina, we often neglect ourselves and focus on others. That is another big thing that I focus on. Um, hello, Francois. And hello, Diane. Made it just got back from my bees. I'm jealous that you have bees. I, they are bees are have been the animal that's helped me through my menopause, actually. Um, Maria, it's a big book. Yes, it is. <laughs> a great big heavy book. Um, yeah, I think a big, big part of dealing with these issues is self-care. You can't help others if you've exhausted yourself. Uh, a big, And that is still a lesson that I'm learning. It is a big, big lesson to learn, to know that it's actually okay to say no sometimes when people ask you to do things. Um, I'm very good at not saying no and taking on far too much. That's one of my big issues. <laughs> But I think you do. You have to make some time. And I, you know, I'm a working wife and mother. My children are teenagers now, but uh, I've been there. I've done the whole trying to juggle work and a house, running home, um, husband, children, school runs, dogs, <laughs> the whole lot, and work my witchcraft in with it as well. It's very difficult to find time for yourself, but it is very important. Um, but there are some suggestions in here. There are proper rituals, full rituals, but there's also some suggestions for each issue for tiny little rituals. And we'll have a look at one of those in a second. Uh, our tail needs to make more room on your bookshelf. <laughs> yeah, I always need more bookshelves. <laughs> I do. I do love books. Um, Martina has ordered from Amazon. Yeah, 1st of September. Amazon don't tend to send theirs out early, so that'll be the 1st of September. Hello, Jane. Um, Jane, love your YouTube videos. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. I do have a YouTube channel for anyone that's not seen it. And if you want to watch and listen to me waffling <laughs> completely inanely, there are lots of videos over there as well. Uh, so let's have a look. Um, it's not a quick fix. It is not going to just magically transform your life by reading one chapter. You will have to put some work in, but it's like anything. Anything that's worthwhile takes a little bit of work, but hopefully it will help. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit. I've printed off a little bit to, to kind of read that I sort of cherry picking bits that I think are important. Uh, Joanne is a book addict. Never need an excuse to buy a book. Oh, I'm so there with you, Joanne, where you can see that side, some of the, that's just a small part of my bookshelves. Love them. So I'll read some bits and pieces that I've picked out. I don't have all the answers. Um, I can offer solutions. I can offer some support and some help in the form of magical solutions based on my own experiences. Um, I don't think we really need to adjust our personalities or our characteristics as such, but I think we need to look at things that might be keys or um, triggers for particular issues and situations and work out why they're happening and what we can do to avoid them or to deal with them once they've happened. Uh, a lot of it is... Uh, a bit of shadow work, if you like. It is a little bit about um, looking at yourself, sometimes quite harshly, to see what you can do to change things. Um, Sue, you look so much better than Friday. Thank you, Sue. It might be that I've got a new lamp. <laughs> I'm working with a new webcam and it makes me look really blue, but yes, I am. But this last week has been quite draining. I think a lot of people have felt that. Um, good afternoon, Patrice. Um, oh, look, my husband's put the YouTube channel in the comments there. Thank you very much. Joanne, yes, this talk will be available to listen to, to listen to again. Once the live is finished, give it a few seconds and it appears magically on the Facebook page and you can watch the replay. Um, so let's have a look. Now, there are some important things to remember. It might not be an easy journey. There will be bumps along the road for sure it will take some time and effort but it real will really be worth it most importantly remember you're never alone particularly with this online world there's always someone somewhere that will listen 
Remember that you are always important. Remember that you are always amazing. No matter what you think on a bad day, remember you're just experiencing that. It's just a bad day. Underneath it all, you're still amazing. There is nothing that cannot be sorted, dealt with or handled in some way. It's just knowing how to do it. Don't give up. It's okay to have a day off. It's okay to have a bad day. Just start again the next day or even the next week. That you can never have too many new starts. Be kind to yourself and be gentle. And one of my key things, learn to trust your intuition. Absolutely learn to trust your intuition. And also, importantly, I think, you're not broken. You don't need to be fixed. You might just benefit from a little TLC and perhaps a little fine tuning. And as well, just because you might be struggling, just remember that that's not actually failing. It's just struggling and it can be dealt with. There are no failings. And I think as well, it's a lot of these things is about recognizing, acknowledging and accepting. A lot of these issues are sparked by underlying causes. And it's, it's if you can find out and work out what the underlying cause is, then you're part of the way there. Uh, lots of things trigger us. Um, some issues you might not want to delve into. Um, I think we're looking at shadow work there. You've got to be ready for shadow work. You've got to be ready to uncover the uncomfortable things. Um, but it will be worth it. And I think you've also got to remember that we need to let go. Before you can bring in all of the good stuff, you've got to let go. You've got to release stuff to make room for the good stuff so release the things that are whizzing around in your head doing you no good if you hang on to negative emotions negative thoughts negative patterns they're very damaging they can sit there and they can fester if left unresolved um jane a little tweak occasionally is good oh absolutely i'm not talking about taking huge leaps and jumps i'm talking about little tiny tweaks uh, every little tweak it's like dropping a pebble in the pond the ripples flow far out. So it is about making little tweaks. And um, But with all of the magical stuff that's in here, it's not anything too stressful or complicated. I don't do complicated. <laughs> um, and also looking at the everyday practical stuff. Um, magic is brilliant. Magic works fantastically well. But if you haven't sorted the base, mundane, everyday stuff, then the magic's going to struggle to work. So it is a case of if you are taking on too much work, then you've got to let some of it go. You've got to delegate some um, workloads are probably one of the biggest stress causing things. Planning ahead, being a bit organized, being practical, being a bit tidy, doing the housework, getting outside, giving yourself some self care. Um, Gypsy getting better at making time for me. Yeah, no, I know. I know that Gypsy's got five children. So <laughs> making time for yourself when you've got that many children is an achievement, um, but very, very important to do. Um, and finding things you like to do as well, you know, hobbits and hobbits. <laughs> finding yourself a hobbit is very important. You can always, you always need a hobbit around the house or even a hobby. <laughs> I obviously need a bit more sugar today. Um, but yes, find yourself hobbies that you enjoy doing as well and make sure that you, you know, chuck those into your schedule. Um, I think talking, communication is also very key. Looking after your health, journaling. I am the world's worst rubbish journaler. But if that's what helps you, then journaling, brilliant. Cleaning, yeah, I know it's boring, but making like snow white occasionally really really does help um sharon thank you for doing this your knowledge is so appreciated oh i don't know about knowledge sharon <laughs> i am absolutely not an expert but all i can do is is work from my own experiences and hopefully share so that they help someone else um gypsy wants a hobbit yeah we could we should all have a hobbit to make breakfast and second breakfast and elevensies and Adele, no need cake. Adele, I've just had cake. Maybe I didn't have enough cake. <laughs> uh, 
uh, Teresa, this is so terrific. I'm about to go back to work teaching. I think this book will help me stay centered and healthy. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, it, the world's been so upside down at the moment. Um, are Hobbits available with the book, says Karen? Yes, Curative Magic, free with, uh, Hobbit free with every single copy. <laughs> Zinnia, hobbits are good at self-care. Yeah, maybe we should. Maybe that's the pattern we need to follow. We all need to follow the life of a hobbit. <laughs> Martin, that would be a great selling point. If only I could find hobbits to give away with each book, that would be brilliant. <laughs> uh, I think as well, we witches, getting out in nature. It's a basic one, but it works. Uh, working with their senses as well. Saying no, I already touched on as well. And I think gratitude as well. Also remembering that even when life seems quite bleak, there's always something positive that you can hang on to. Um, hobbies, we're not going down that route again. <laughs> and I think setting small goals. Let's not go straight in and write a whole list of stuff that needs to change. Set very tiny goals. Because then each time you hit a goal, it's an achievement. If you set something that's far off, it's not going to happen. Um, Lani making you hungry sorry Lani <laughs> right so let me show you a chapter I have got a bookmark because if you fold down the pages of your book I will send a hobbit to sort you out <laughs> uh, I've chosen today to deal with anxiety let's give you a look inside the book um, because I think particularly at the moment we're all struggling with a little bit of that so I go through what the actual issue is. So having anxiety issues on occasion is absolutely normal. Um, if it has started to take over your life, please, please go and see your doctor about it. There are a lot of therapies that can help. Um, from my own point of view, so back to food again, it's always based around food. So <laughs> uh, hello, Melody. Uh, Martina, gratitude and compassion are so important. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You can't keep working spells and magic and rituals to take to ask for stuff. At some point, you've got to say thank you for it all. Because, you know, it's good manners. after all. <laughs> so I look at each issue. So I'm looking at uh, anxiety and what it actually is from a medical viewpoint. Let's bear in mind that I am not a medical person. Um, they're all taken, all of the medical descriptions in here are taken from the National Health Service Guideline website because um, it's far more important to give you the right information. So anxiety, a feeling of worry, nervousness or unease about something with an uncertain outcome. Strong desire or concern to do something or for something to happen and feelings of tension and worried thoughts. And anxiety can appear in all sorts of ways, trouble sleeping or concentrating, it can even give you bouts of dizziness, sweating or heart palpitations. It can make you feel very on edge or irritable. Uh, it can be for a specific re reason. Obviously, if you've got an upcoming exam or an interview, but it can be a constant feeling if you don't deal with it properly. Um, apparently, it's one of those leftover reactions from humans when we used to be chased by animals. It is a fight or flight response. Thankfully, we don't get chased generally by large animals <laughs> nowadays, um, depending on where you live, I suppose. But uh, other modern day concerns obviously jump into it. Um, Leslie, menopause anxiety is awful. Yeah, menopause, I think, could be a whole book on its own. But I do include a chapter on menopause. Um, Maria, I may start taking my dizzy rascals, think they're needed. <laughs> now, anybody that doesn't know Maria, uh, dizzy rascals are a fantastic name for antidepressant tablets. And I have been there and I have done that uh, when I was struggling really, really badly with the menopause hormones. I have never experienced anything quite like it. It was the most horrendous thing in my life, not knowing who you were when you woke up or whether you were going to be angry all day, or cry all day, or just totally disassociated, big word for the day, mad, absolutely mad. And I thought, it's the menopause, I've got to deal with it, it's just something that happens, you have to deal with it. You absolutely do not, in any way, shape or form, go and see someone. Um, I actually asked to see 
at my doctor's surgery, someone that specialised in dealing with the menopause. And I got a very, very lovely doctor, lady doctor, who'd already been through the menopause. So she understood and she put me on the Dizzy Rascals, <laughs> the depression tablets. Now, I actually hated being on them because they made me feel a little bit like I was underwater. But they worked. They gave me the boost that I needed to balance, uh, balance everything out. Um, so don't be afraid to ask for some help or go on any type of medication because it can help. Uh, Annette, having become a bit of a hermit, I'm having talking therapy to help with it. There's a lot of help out there. Yeah, uh, there is a lot of help out there. And even if you're just talking to your friends or other people that are going through same or similar situations, once you start talking about it, you'll be surprised how many other people are dealing with the same thing. Um, I've actually, I'm not going to go into all the gory details, but at the age of 16, I developed a uh, bowel disease and I struggled, huge, big time struggled. And I spent many years on really strong, nasty, nasty steroids that put me on the antidepressant tablets and all the side effects and all horrendous things. And I actually sorted it for the most part by using holistic therapies. It was reflexology that was my saviour. I still have a bowel disease and I still still suffer with it on occasion, but nowhere near as, as badly as I used to. So whatever it is, there is there are ways and other things to look for to give you the support. Um, uh, Joanne, I have so many questions, but I don't want to dominate the chat. Could I send you a private message? Joanne, ask uh, if you think the questions will help us on here. But yes, I am always available to message. If You know, I don't have all the answers. I really don't. Um, pop the questions on here. If I don't get to them today, then I will private message you. Absolutely no problem. Uh, Lani has anxiety attacks and they're not nice. Yeah, they aren't nice at all. Sue used to call them happy slappy pills. <laughs> yep, happy pills. You'd be surprised how many people have been on them. Um, but yeah, yeah. Teresa, thank you for including menopause in your book. I'm perimenopause. Yeah, I am. Six years in now, Teresa. I, I am still in the perimenopause with all the lovely joys that brings. Um, Jackie, steroids are really beneficial, but they can, can be nasty to deal with. Yes, they are. Steroids are, are you know, I had to take them because, you know, my bowel was falling apart, but they do have some nasty side effects. Um, but yeah, it's a way, everyone's individual. So it's a way of finding uh, a solution for you. So don't discount the medical stuff. Go and see someone. However, back to the magical stuff. Uh, this can help. This can help particularly a lot with the uh, mental and emotional side of things. So what I include in every chapter is affirmations. Now, I know they sound a little bit airy, fairy, fluffy, bunny stuff. Uh, and to a certain extent, I think they probably are a bit new agey, but it's words and words have power. We work with words in ritual and in spell work, and we work with those words to bring power. So an affirmation can have an awful lot of power behind it. So words have power. Um, there's a few suggestions for each in here to work with. I also like to work with colour magic. So I've included some colour magic suggestions as well. Colour can really affect how you feel and how you think. And it can affect your mood and your energy. And you can hear that Eric's woken up. <laughs> He likes to bark at anybody that has the audacity to walk past the front of her house. I mean, how rude. <laughs> I've also included some herbs. Uh, herbs to work with in a magical spell workings. Pick from my ideas or use your own. Uh, foods I've also included as well, because you know it's me. I've got to include magical food. And yes, there's a recipe for each one as well. Um because, you know, you've got to have a cake recipe. Cake always makes you feel better. Herbal teas I've also included as well, because I like to drink those. Um, but I've included some suggestions. Incenses and oils. The, our sense of smell really can affect how you think and how you feel in your emotions. It's the same as just the sound. You know, a track of music can evoke so many different emotions. 
So the scents of smell as well. So I've included some incense and oil blends, which is not easy to say. Incenses and oils, there's lots of S's in there. Um, uh, Adele, love working with herbs. And is the cake? Yes, there is absolutely cake. Of course there is. <laughs> Diane, think of it as becoming wiser rather than older. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, I've skipped now. Joanne, my aunt thinks I'm entering the perimenopause. I'm only 42. Uh, it's frightening to think I'm getting older. Joanne, I'm 51 and I've had this for six years now. So, yeah, it can happen at any time. Um, no, it, yes, it, of course, it, no one wants to get older, I guess. But yes, I think you learn, don't you? The older you get, the wiser you do get. That is, you know. Jackie says cake should be its own fruit group, just like chocolate. Yes, <laughs> as long as it's not white chocolate. Let's not even go there. It's not real chocolate. <laughs> I've also included an everyday exercise. And no, I don't mean running or jogging or jumping and doing star jets because, you know, that's not going to happen. Um, but it is daily routines, daily and regular routines to get the positive energy flowing and to get rid of the negative vibes. Crystals I've included because let's face it, who doesn't love a crystal? I've given you suggestions for each issue and how to work with them and suggestions for which ones to work with. Meditation. There's a meditation for each one as well. And a spell, because we like spells. They're all simple and straightforward. There's nothing fancy. There's nothing exotic. There's no expensive ingredients. This is me. It's working with what you got. There is a ritual, again, not too fancy, not too complicated, but just something to give you a bit of focus for each one to bring in deity and the elements. Uh, and I've also suggested a magic bundle for each, um, just to help you through your situation, which is kind of like uh, a spell pouch. Or uh, in Hoodoo, ladies have a nation sack, which is a red flannel bag that they keep tucked in their bra. No one else knows what's inside it. It's their own secret bits and bobs. And that's what I suggest. And I give you selections for each, suggestions for each one. Um, Sharon, six years. Can it not be over quickly? Oh, I'm told it lasts an awful lot longer, Sharon. Uh, and again, without being too into detail, I am still having regular periods, but I'm six years into the perimenopause. But there you go. Beck, 41 and starting with it. Started menstruating at 12. Had a, Yeah, I had issues during pregnancy as well. Two C-sections. Yeah, it can happen early. Um, Adele, this sounds like the perfect book. It has every, Oh, thank you, Adele. Hopefully it will provide some help for people. Um, Francois, the Chinese consider menopause as a new start. Yeah, an actual fact, the chapter that perhaps I should have focused on the on the menopause. Maybe we'll do a separate menopause one. The menopause ritual I've actually included is all about changes and transitions rather than focusing on the negative side of it. I have focused on it being the next new phase in your life, which is a better way to think of it, I think. Um, I don't, do know, don't forget the Hobbit. No, don't forget the Hobbit. Very useful. Um, Joanne, completely new to witchcraft and magic. I will be honest, I'm not very open-minded, but I want to be. My first basic question is, what is magic? Good question. Good question, Joanne. Um, and I am actually giving a book giveaway today. So, Joanne, you've just won the first book prize. And I'm going to write, jot your name down. Ugh. Joanne Taylor, PM me with your address and I will send you a copy of the book. It'll be winging its way in the post to you. But yes, very good question. What is magic? So magic is primarily about working with energy. It's about moving energy to make the world a better place. I am an animist, so I believe that everything has magic. Everything has energy. So whether it is, oh, I've got some crystals here. So whether it's a little crystal, whether it's a shell or a pebble or a concrete building, they've all got an energy field. Uh, think of it, some people call them auras when they're around people. It's about working with that energy and making changes for your life, for other people's life, whether it's healing, whether it's bringing money in, um, 
any amount of intent, but it is about working with energy to change things. Very, very basic answer to a quite a complicated, complicated question, but hopefully that gives you an idea. Um, but Joanne, do message me afterwards with your address and we can talk about it some more in detail. Um, Deborah, I was 38 when my menopause happened. A bit of a shock. Whew, yeah, I bet. Now I'm 48 and post-menopausal. Yay! <laughs> Sharon, hot flushes, night sweats. Yep, that's the beginning. Uh, yep, yeah, Maria's 10 years in. Beck, hot flushes. Oh, Beck sees the hot flushes as surges of energy helping me to become a wise crone. I like it. Now, see, I'm not ready to be a crone yet. I am still a mother, obviously, but I'm not ready to be a crone yet. So I'm I'm going on a in between -y. I'm a matriarch now. I will get to be a crone, but I'm not ready for it yet. <laughs> um, yes, congratulations, Joanne. See, I sprung that on you, didn't I? <laughs> there will be another. I've got I've got another book and a set of um, oracle cards to give away. So stay tuned. They will be given at random. <laughs> so back to the book. So we've got the affirmations. So it is about changing the way that you speak because words have so much power. Um, good morning, Green. Uh, you don't have to apologize for being late. <laughs> and the color magic. And then I've got herbs, not for uh, consumption, particularly because, again, some of them are some of them are toxic. Some of them will you know, go against your medication or whatever. So be careful. These are for magical use. So I'll just pick out some that are good for anxiety. There's a whole list here, but some of the more common ones, uh, hypericum, passion flower, rose, uh, rue. I've turned over two pages at once. And then I've got foods. So I've got cinnamon, cloves, Grapes, green tea, lemon balm and turmeric, all really good foods, which can be eaten, obviously, to combat anxiety. Um, we've got to, I am going to have to do a menopause one, aren't I? <laughs> um, good morning, Anne. Or oh, it's evening over here and or afternoon. Good, good, good day to you. <laughs> Karen has finished the menopause. Yay. There is a light at the end of the tunnels. Yes, there is. Um, yeah, our Luna, quite lucky with the menopause, started young and didn't really suffer. Yeah, everyone's individual, aren't they? So it is, um, Kerry, if you're experiencing depression, how would you recommend finding that tiny gap to start any meditation spell work, if that makes sense? Yes, it does make sense, Kerry. I think with any of these, the first step is actually wanting to help yourself. And that's quite a big step to take. And I think that in itself is a goal. It's an achievement to actually stop and say, do you know what? I've got to make a change here. Um, I haven't even dented this and we're already 40 minutes into it. Yes, I think that is a very important thing, Kerry. You have got to make that change, that you've got to make that decision yourself to, to make that step. And we're going with the stealth, <laughs> stealth ninja behind me because teenagers <laughs> need picking up from work. <laughs> um, yeah, you've got to make that step. And it is not easy. But once you've actually made that decision, baby steps, absolute baby steps. And I have given some ideas in here on how to start. Um, uh, Sue so, um, didn't get away from the flush. Yeah, 12 years in. Yeah, oh, you've got to be coming to the end. So you really have. Um, Sylvie, I think magic is also kind of personal, a bit different for everyone. Yes, absolutely. Um, you will feel magic differently. Each person will feel magic differently, um, see magic differently, work with it differently. Um, absolutely. It is. I think witchcraft is a very personal pathway. You have to make it your own. And everyone will work with things in a slightly different way. Um, hello, Sylvia. Uh, Luna, can't wait, but thank you. Um, Joanne, can you say more about working with magic? Well, let's have, hopefully when I go through some of this, it will... Um, make some more sense to you, Joan, but I will be happy to talk to you about it in detail afterwards. Absolutely no problem. Um, Leslie has 55, been post menopause for four years. Does that make me a, a crone? You can be a crone at whatever age, age you want to. It is an absolutely, it's a state of mind. Um, I'm 52 this year and I'm nowhere near ready to be a crone. Nowhere near. 
Deborah, I still get very tearful. Yeah, I still have my days where, you know. Uh, Karen, if you could re recommend a basic self-care kit, which items would be the essentials? You know, I think the basic, basic one is time. I don't think there's any particular kit as such other than giving yourself time and space to do your own thing. You really have, even if it's to just read a book for 20 minutes or to have a bath without being interrupted by dogs and kids. And <laughs> Time is the essential thing. Um, absolutely. Um, oh, oh, Jane's struggling with the internet. Oh, let's keep it positive. Keep it going. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, Sharon said it's just that right now it's on fire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, Sue, I'm hoping to get from the book the makings of a toolkit that I can personalise to suit my particular issues. Absolutely, that's what it's designed for. I've given you my ideas and suggestions, but it is as all of my stuff is. Make it your own. Absolutely make it your own. Um Debbie didn't suffer too much in the menopause. You are very lucky, Debbie. And oh, yeah, I'm totally jealous. <laughs> uh, Diane aspires to be Granny Weatherwax. Oh, me. Absolutely, Diane. She's my hero. When I grow up, I want to be Granny Weatherwax. Um, so in this day and age, we don't become crones easily. No, it's funny, isn't it? Crone, I am writing a book about the triple goddess. So <laughs> I've been doing quite a bit of research on this. Crone is seen as such a negative word, but actually it's it's not. It's 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 the wise, it's the elder. It's the wise per, wise woman. It's the elder. So we should aspire to be crones, really. Um, so Esme, yeah, Esme Weatherwax is she absolutely rocks. Uh, Becky is the neighbourhood witch. Fantastic. So I totally you know backwards and forwards now. So there is a recipe. So it's clove, cinnamon and chocolate cookies, because who doesn't love a chocolate cookie? But it's got cloves and it's got cinnamon in it, both which are really good for anxiety. We've also included some herbal tea recipes. Um, several there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different herbal tea recipes there. But again, I've encouraged you to try the combinations yourself and, and work from it. Um, Kerry is embracing her inner crone. Yeah, and I think that we do like labels, don't we? But I think the the goddess phases, maiden, mother, matriarch, crone, are a state of mind, uh, mind. And I think you can also work with all of those phases, no matter what age you are. We don't, let's lose the labels. Let's lose that kind of idea that we have to be a certain age to work with that particular phase. You don't, you work with what, you know, you might be a 90 year old and feel that you need a bit of um, let your inner child out. So you'd work with the maiden phase. That's yeah, that's a whole other story anyway. Um, yeah, the, the crone does get a negative energy, yeah, image, but uh, she is the wise woman. But I've also included some incense and oil blends uh, for you to mix up and work with yourself. I love working with loose incense um, and essential oils. It's the senses. It is a smell of something can really evoke a, a long lost memory or a feeling. So I do love cinnamon and cloves and all the sort of festive scents. And they always make me feel happy. They always uplift me. So it's got to be something that works for you. Um, I've got an everyday exercise. Um, this is for anxiety. So this is just your little tiny daily ritual. Uh, when you wake up, hopefully early that if it's dark even better or you can do it in the evening when the sun's gone down make yourself a hot drink or drink of your choice and sit down in a quiet place light some candles around the room and turn the electric lights off sit down with a cuppa and just enjoy the candlelight and the silence quietly and peacefully sip your drink and focus on breathing deeply and slowly inhale calm air and exhale any worries Sit for as long as you want to, or as long as you can, and make sure to snuff out the candles once you've finished. So that is a key, because that's about making time for yourself, quiet time for yourself. Uh, and that, for me, as I said, is the, that's the base ingredient in your toolkit, is making time for yourself. 
even if it's a very short time each day, it is really, really valuable. Um, yeah, the, the, the society, society doesn't value older um, as a rule. Hopefully it's changing. Hopefully it's changing. Um, Eva, uh, Eva, there are days that I'm done with the mother phase and looking forward to the crone. Yes, yeah, see, I think there's too big a gap there. I think from the mother to the crone, particularly in these modern times, it's too big a gap. That's why I slot the matriarch in there. She is a queen um, before you hit that crone um, sort of phase. Um, <laughs> Jackie, I may be older in numbers, but my mind disagrees. Yeah, I'm with you there. In my head, I'm still 25, I think. <laughs> and yes, we do need to reclaim it. We need to reclaim the crone as being a positive. Uh, Adele, some would say I'm a crone as I'm a grandmother, but yet I feel as though I'm in the spring of motherhood. Being a crone can wait. Yes, that is a personal choice. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. <laughs> Sylvie, cinnamon is always good. Chocolate as well for good measure. Just have to make sure dogs aren't around. They do love chocolate. Yeah, I'm not, chocolate's not good for doggies. So you do have to keep it out of the way. Um, but I've also then got crystals. These, I give you a list of the crystals that are particularly good for that issue. And I give you a, a sort of one liner about what they actually do. So amber, for instance, helps stimulate the brain and nervous system to bring clarity and helps release anxiety. Um, let's have a look at another one. Uh, Labradite heals, shields and protects against ne negative energy. Uh, moonstone brings emotional balance and stability can be gained from working with it. So there's just some little prompts um, for the crystals that are good for working with it. Uh, Maria, cinnamon and clove reminds me of my childhood as it was used every day. Yeah, they do that sense. You see, if you can kick off your senses, then they're really good too. Um, Debbie's reclaiming the name hag as positive. Yeah, we should. Absolutely. Um, we have to say congratulations to, to Gypsy, who's just found out she's going to be a grandmother for the first time. You're going to be a nana. I did wonder what you're going to call yourself. Oh, gosh, no, definitely not ready to be a crone. No, Gypsy, you're not a crone yet. No way. Um, it's a brand of instant coffee <laughs> where Eva is. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Sharon, growing old is inevitable, growing up is optional. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but then I've got a meditation for anxiety. I am very well aware that I haven't even got anywhere near doing any of this. We've talked so much. I've talked so much. So then I've got a spell and I've included a spell uh, for each one. I've also, I'm going to come back to the spell because I'm going to run you through doing the spell. I've also got a, a ritual. So for anxiety, I have a floating candle ritual which works with the goddess Kuan Yin. I do hope I pronounced that properly. She's a very compassionate goddess and happy to help and always willing to listen. So there is a proper ritual for you to run through if you want to. And then I work with your little personal bundle to work with for anxiety. Um, you know, it's the modern world is fast paced and it's hectic and we are bombarded from every single angle by social media, by television, by people, by wants, by needs, by this, by that. It can be totally overwhelming. Um, it throws challenges to us the whole time and that can really kick off anxiety or stress or any of those. It's about learning what your triggers are. It's about learning the best way for you personally to stop that anxiety from overtaking you uh, and to learn to deal with any fallout that comes from it as well. Uh, hopefully, if you start to learn your triggers, you'll be able to nip it in the bud before it even kicks in. Um, but that's, you know, it is about making a personal journey from it. So um, well, for any, we've mentioned Granny Weather, actually I've got my Discworld bookmark there. <laughs> So I'm going to just run quickly through the uh, spell. Please do carry on asking questions if you've got any. Um, let's have a look. There is one there I've missed. Um, the matriarch phase sounds perfect to fit between the two. Uh, I'm really liking to, liking about the senses. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, and I think sound as well. There's an awful lot of music, and I include it in this spell, actually, 
I use music a lot in spell work or in ritual because it kicks off different feelings and different emotions. Um, and I think it's important. You don't, can you tell they're back from the, yes, that's the front door going and the dog barking. <laughs> um, I think that you don't have to, know, there's some brilliant pagan music out there, absolutely brilliant pagan music out there. Uh, Sprig and Mist are one of my uh, local bands that are absolutely fantastic. Damn the Bard as well, obviously. Uh, Incubus, Succubus, lots and lots of brilliant pagan bands. But you don't have to stick to pagan music when you use in rituals or in spell work. You can use whatever you want to. I am stuck in 1984, and all of my music is is 80s pop music. So when I'm working a ritual, and then oh look, he's back. When I work a ritual, they're so professional here we are, absolutely professional. When I work in a ritual, I may well have Jimmy Somerville blaring out because it makes me happy. So go with what works for you um, to relax, to work with ritual or anything. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to catch up with these questions. Penelope, are there bits in the book that you would think be helpful for dealing with PTSD and all its fun impacts? Alongside professional help, of course, yes. If you're getting professional help, then that's the basis of it. But yes, because the book does deal with anxiety and stress and transitions and changes, depression, panic attacks and fear, which I understand are all part of that. So yes, hopefully it will give you some prompts to, to help you with. Um, I've just, just squiggled up too far and too far and too fast then. Uh, Jackie has added the book to your wish list. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Helen, I use music when I want to relax. Silence just makes me more anxious. Yeah, I think that's, you've got to go with what works for you. Um, Green, that's where I'm right now, overwhelmed. I had a moment two days ago where I just cried. Yeah, I, the menopause really does that to you. Um, Trying to fit in full-time job, being a teacher with virtual homeschooling. Oh, homeschooling in the last few months has been a real challenge for all of us, particularly when you have a 14-year-old son and you can't make a head and tail of any of his homework. Uh, Deborah, where can I order the book from? Okay, well, you can go to my website, rachelpatterson.co.uk, and it will list all the stockists. But it's from all the usual guys, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Book Depository, all of the usual online places have it. Uh, Lorena McKenna, yeah, she's good for ritual. Do yes, Damon Bard was on last night, wasn't he? He's doing some uh, live uh, rituals. Jackie loves 80s pop music, yes. <laughs> um, I do love 80s pop. Tere uh, Tessa is the one in my family who's supposed to be the one who doesn't have anxiety, but I think I do, maybe from worrying about them all who officially do. How can you recognize if you're anxious, having anxiety or having a bad day or a bad run? I think it's a mixture. I think it's a mixture of all. Sometimes, you know, a lot of these issues, when I looked into the actual medical side of a lot of these issues, they were very similar. It, the, the symptoms for each is very similar. So it's important to make time for yourself. Uh, Lani, Amy has decided to join in. Hi, Amy. <laughs> 80s music rocks. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yes, the music has to be your choice. And again, because that has um, emotions, it will stir emotions. Karen finds chanting good, playing the flute and the drum. Yep, I absolutely love my drum. Drumming is brilliant. Uh, right, so let me, uh, where have we got here? Let's scoot up here. Scooty, scooty, scoot. Scooty, scoot. Just making sure I've answered all the little questions. <laughs> right, keep asking the questions because it's the good questions that are going to win you a book. And I'm running out of time to give it away. So it'll be the next <laughs> next good question in the next five minutes. Let me quickly run you through the spell because I've waffled for ages. So this is a spell to focus your mind on something relaxing and calming. And I think that's a big part of all of it. It's just taking that time out and... I think grounding as well is really important because I think you have to ground first to be able to find that focus. So this spell is about focusing your mind on relaxing and calming, channeling the anxiety out through creativity. In fact, just the actions of sitting and focusing on your breathing and working on controlling those anxiety feelings should help. 
then follow with the creative activity it will give your anxiety an escape route because it's got to have an outlet it's got to have somewhere to go um, this actually involves throwing away some of the spell ingredients at the end and that is your physically and mentally and emotionally letting go um, Sue says, what's the difference between a ritual and spell work? Okay, so the spell work is actually the magic that you work, whether it's candle magic or here I'm working with some crystals, you can work with herbs. It's the actual spell, practical spell work that you do is the spell. The ritual is, it's actually just a repeated set of actions, but the full proper ritual is casting the circle, calling the quarters and working with deity. Very condensed explanation. Uh, Gypsy, what measure can you put in place now that would help with anxiety when menopause starts? Oh, yeah. Um, information. Absolutely information. Do your research on it. There is information out there. It seems to be few and far between, but there is information out there. So I would absolutely do your research on it first um, and talk. Talk to, you know, all of your mothers and your sisters and anyone that you know of that sort of age that may have gone through it or been going through it because support by talking also helps as well uh, Sylvia what would you say would be the best advice written in the book well that's got to be the cake recipes obviously <laughs> no I think I think it is support it's about supporting each other's and it's about communication um, and and time we're back to time again we're back to self-care because I think that's the key to it the absolute key um diane likes and mike oldfield oh we've got jethro tull as well yep kerry can you do a spell bag and gift it to them for anxiety um yes i think if you're working spells absolutely better to work them yourself if you can help them create the bag then it will have far more personal energy to it but yes you can make it for other people no problem um, Sharon, can you make like a boost bottle that you could smell when you're feeling drained? If you get a little bottle and you put salt in it and you put a few drops of essential oil in it, it will hold the scent and then you can just put a lid on it, give it a bit of shake, undo the bottle and sniff it and that would be absolutely brilliant. Um, Sue, can I send curative magic out to people who ask for it? Uh, do you mean sending energy as in Reiki or healing or that kind of thing? Yes, as long as they ask for it. Just work with it the same as you would with Reiki or with healing magic. Uh, Caroline, what's your best piece of advice to help deal with grief? It's very personal. Don't be told that you should have got over it by now or you should do this or you should do that. You have to grieve in your own way. Uh, Sylvie, I, I'm sorry, I'm firing through these because I'm very well aware that we've hit an hour and I haven't even done the spell yet. Uh, Sylvie, are our pets also receptive to magic? Uh, yes. If you have a cat, it will always be in your altar. Um, they do like to be in, on your altar. Um, and dogs, I say, uh, Eric, he's playing with the curtain at the moment, but he tends to sit with me a lot of the time when I'm doing it. Um, but they yeah, can also receive healing magic as well. Absolutely. Um, Luna, I'm looking forward to this book. It feels like you've a lot of personal energy into it. Yes, it has. It is, is a personal energy. <laughs> Diane is suggesting wine. I have included wine as one of the uh, suggestions, but only a little bit, not too much, because, you know, that does that enters into a whole other thing. Uh, Leslie, do you think that past lives affect the kind of witch you are or your beliefs as a witch? I think anyone that is a witch now is generally remembering the witchcraft from past lives. Um, I don't think I'm learning things now. I think I'm remembering them. So, yes, I do. Absolutely. Um, Adele, while I'm quite an old hand to this, how would you go about teaching younger children? My granddaughter is very interested now. She's seven. Uh, she's taken my copy of Moon Magic. It's interesting, isn't it, for children? I... I struggle with this one a bit uh, i run an online school of witchcraft but we don't take age of 18 we might take them between 16 and 17 if their parent is one of their parents is learning with us because i don't think witchcraft as a whole should be taught to young children i do however think that children love to be involved in it so teaching them about nature 
uh, teaching them about animals and plants, teaching them about respecting and connecting with nature is brilliant. I think also the Sabbaths, they love to celebrate the Sabbaths uh, and explaining to them the seasons and how the wheel is turning. If you look on their Kitchen Witch blog, we do the lovely Gypsy has actually got her one of her daughters is writing Sabbath rituals for us, um, which is fantastic. So there are ways to include them, but I would do that. They also love working with crystals, um, get your children involved in crystals and making witch bottles or spell pouches to keep away nightmares or to protect against bullying, things like that. Get them involved in that. Um, hopefully that helps. Um, loads and loads of questions now. Hurrah! Um, self care is important. Yes, absolutely. What was the biggest question you had that led you to write this book? Oh, interesting question. Um, I think it was, I think the menopause was one of the biggest keys because the menopause does bring in an awful lot of those other issues. And I think, um, I think that was probably the key for it was working through the menopause because it's one of the most horrendous things I've ever had to deal with. Um, so that is, um, I think, the biggest thing. Um, and right, Lizzie, Lizzie Large, you're the second winner for the Curative Magic book. If you would like to PM me with your address, I will get that one sent out to you. Um, yeah, menopause was the real key for it. Uh, and then, of course, you know, it grew from there like it does. Uh, Tessa, external factors made me pause on my Kitchen Witch course when I was so close to the finish, but I think this book might give me the kickstart to give me positive tweaks to help myself and then finish my course, which would be good for my own time and self-care. Win-win, absolutely. Uh, and also remember that you aren't alone. We've got such a fantastic support network within the internet that there are always people there to help and to talk. Uh, Debbie, grieving is very personal. Took me three years to grieve my hubby. Yeah, and and I'm sure it's still with you, Debbie. You don't, yeah, don't let anybody tell you that there is a certain time for it. It has to be at your own pace. Um, <laughs> Gypsy's chicken likes to get in on a ritual. There's so many comments to that, Gypsy. Ho hopefully, just to join in and not actually, you know, sacrificially. <laughs> Uh, Penelope, how many things in the book can be done with a baby hanging from your boob? <laughs> oh, I've been there, Penelope. I have been there. Um, reading the book in one hand, baby. I used to eat my dinner whilst bread, breastfeeding. I would have the plate resting over the top of it. Yeah, you will get through it, Penelope. There will be, there is, there will be time on the other side of it. Um, hello, Trudy. Just joined and acquired your book on Kitchen Witch Crystals. So fab to see. Oh, thank you, Trudy. I'm glad you like the book. Uh, Sue Simmons, cats, yes, on the altar, under the altar and batting my goddess <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> Love them. Yeah, they do like to. The animals pick up on magic. They are very, very perceptive to it. Um, Sylvia has five cats and two big dogs. Uh, Rhiannon, love this book. Oh, thank you. Joanne, do you regularly hold these talks on Facebook? Yes, Joanne. Here on this Facebook page is a bit of a special one today because it's the book launch for um, Curative Magic. Da -da -da. But I do. Every Friday morning, 9 a.m. UK time, I do a live chat. And if you want to hop on over and join the Kitchen Witch Coven Facebook group, we also do regular Waffling Witch live chats with myself and the hearth guardians there's a group of us that do it so yes i'm here every friday morning uk time 9 a.m uh, and you can catch all of the uh, replays on my youtube channel as well uh, trudy has dried all her herbs including mugwort how do i bind them or what do i use for the smudge stick okay once your herbs are all dried literally just squish them all together and bind them but bind them with something that will burn string or twine that's a, a natural one literally just tie them together and to make sure you tie them tightly um that's it that that is, smudge sticks are really really easy to make uh sharon has two of my books already and you signed them can we buy direct from you with an autograph <laughs> cheeky yes sharon on uh, on the kitchen witch website kitchenwitchhearth.net if you go to the online shop you can um sign uh, buy order signed copies uh, Tessa, I don't think there's a switch off for grief. It's not something to finish, but you learn to live with it. Um, 
my dad died suddenly four years ago and grief can be like waves yeah there i don't think there is a time limit i don't think anybody should tell you there is it is um your own personal thing my husband's put up the link to the next waffling witches um leslie when did you realize you were a witch <laughs> that was an interesting question there um i was born on Halloween, I was born on the 31st of October, so I think it was kind of fated. <laughs> I think it was just meant to be, really. But I also grew up with a dad that was into organic gardening way before it was fashionable. He always took us to, I mean, we went to Stonehenge before it was all fenced off. We used to go and sit there and have picnics. We used to go to different um, historic sites. He's not a pagan, but he has leanings that way. So I grew up with that side of it, but it was probably coming up for 30 years ago now. And I found a book in a charity shop about the history of witchcraft. 50p, bought it, read it and thought, that's it. I felt like I've come home. So and that was it. I then grabbed everything I absolutely could to um, learn about it. Joanne, next basic question. What is a witch? Hmm. There are... There are hundreds and hundreds of different pathways under the paganism umbrella. Some of them include witch, some of them don't. You don't have to be pagan to be a witch. You don't have to be Wiccan to be a witch. And not all witches are Wiccan, not all Wiccans are witches. <laughs> um, a witch is someone, I think, that practices witchcraft. So you work with spells, you work with magic, you work with energy, you work in tune with nature and in tune with the seasons is a very short you ask 13 12 witches and you'll get 13 different answers so um credwin's hearth uh spoke to me before got a small witch shop in new new uh, nj is that new jersey sorry usa we love your books in your shop oh fantastic thank you thank you thank you um it really does feel like coming home says lisa it was like that for me when i recently discovered witchcraft yeah it is it is uh, Adele, could you post up about the history of witchcraft? Sounds like another book to look at. It was a really old book that's not in print anymore. I think that's probably why it was in a um, charity shop. And we're going back 30 years now. It wasn't actually written by a witch. It was written by a historian. Um, and it was just describing a lot of the wicker, really, which is where it all started. Um, Sue appears to be a druid witch. So I have also a set of Flower Magic Oracle cards to give away. So Sue Simmons, if you would like to message me your address, you have won the copy of the uh, Flower Magic Oracle cards. Just drop me a PM and I will get them posted to you. Andrea, which of your books would you recommend to beginner witch? Most of them, Andrea. I write for beginners, but hopefully with flavours of for those that are more advanced, hopefully find something from it as well. But I would look at the pagan portals ones because they are all introductions to things. Um, Sharon Sabi says she's spelling it wrong. Should be a B and not a W on the front of which. <laughs> right, let me quickly run you through this spell before, you know, it's bedtime. <laughs> You need a dish, flat dish or a tray. You need sand, soil or small seeds. And I'm going to work with sesame seeds. You need to tip some sesame seeds or sand or soil onto your plate. Oh, Eric's back. He's now seeing what he can steal. And then you need to flatten it out on the, on the plate or the tray. Give it a little. So you've got a very thin layer of sesame seeds. And then you can put some more, put some music on, put some relaxing music on. You can light some incense. I'm just going to move the sesame seeds away so the dog doesn't eat them. You can't eat sesame seeds. And then you need several crystals of your choice or pebbles or shells. It's entirely up to you. I've got some pebbles, any types of shells. But I've got some crystals here and I picked ones from the book that are specifically for dealing with anxiety. So you put your blinky blonky music on or your ACDC, whatever makes you feel relaxed, it's entirely up to you. You get your layer of seeds or soil, and then you just, you can swirl with line, just with your finger. You can make swirls, you can make dots, 
perhaps put the dog outside when you're trying to relax <laughs> and then place the crystals literally just do it by emptying your mind place the crystals wherever you want to i have some rose quartz i've got some aventurine i've got some pyrite here i've got some moonstone all really really good for helping release anxiety i mean obviously i'm not doing this while focused but that's what you do and you make you can make a mandala you can make an image you can make a pattern you can swirl literally don't even need crystals you can just sit there for 10 minutes 20 minutes half an hour whatever you want and just play with the sand or the seeds it's really about focusing and letting go of everything and giving your subconscious something else to focus on you also draw on the energy from the crystals if you use the crystals but you can use stones and shells as well they've all got energy so you can draw on the energy from it um, and that really is it you sit there it's it's another excuse to give yourself some self-care some time out some nice music some incense and something to focus but something that's not complicated but it's creative and it will help you release that anxiety. When you've finished, take your crystals off and cleanse them because you can use them again. Let's not waste crystals. But the bit that's left behind, the sesame seeds, the sand or the soil, you can throw it away. And you can do that with as much gusto as you want to because that has now got your anxiety in it. So make a, a point of burning it throwing it away in running water as long as it's biodegradable uh, or throwing it in the trash but make a real ceremony of throwing it away and getting rid of that anxiety you can even say something as you do it anxiety that overwhelms me is now gone anxiety you are not wanted to be done and then chuck it away I won't chuck it over my shoulder because it'd be me that has to hoover it up <laughs> but that really is how simple it is and that nothing complicated but something that takes your focus and helps you release that anxiety um sue says the japanese do it with sand yep that's where the idea came from they make lots of different um patterns in sand don't they um all these hearts are popping up with my face but i'm not touching anything <laughs> so it's magic leslie <laughs> senior loves eric yeah he's a total git but you know uh, gypsy like a little zen garden yep absolutely but once you've dumped your anxiety in there you throw away you you throw away it'll also take your mind off food well you can eat sesame seeds so <laughs> sesame seeds in caramel yum uh, lizzie if it's seed can i give it to the birds absolutely if it's a bird seed that they like yes that would be a very nice way to get rid of it and still help nature as well um Zenia, it's a nice meditative spell. It is. Part of that is about getting your brain to switch off and just let it go and focus on something creative. Uh, Sue, if you took it back to beach, would the anxiety be watered down? If you took it, you can do it on the beach with the sand. If you've got a beach near you, you could sit on the sand and draw your patterns in the sand and then let the waves wash it away, which would be perfect. Uh, Luna spells don't have to be complicated oh simple simple for me is always best um, Sylvie what's white labradite for I've got a necklace with one for Mother's Day can I recharge it by using the flower of life yeah you can recharge any crystal from that that would be absolutely perfect I know what labradite is for but I don't know about white labradite let's have a look fitting crystal magic because I don't remember look I've opened the page right on labradite <laughs> Uh, labradite transformation cleansing breaking patterns potential psychic abilities intuition confidence spirituality oh all sorts of things energy healing stress anxiety success decisions trust changes courage self-confidence all sorts of things meditation depression labradite is excellent really really good that's a lovely necklace to get for mother's day but yes recharging it using the flower of life would be perfect um Adele fabulous we'll try this after all this lockdown and it was yeah some places are still in lockdown aren't they um 
Jackie, love you make these things so simple. It makes them doable for us beginners. I, I think it always has to be simple, Jackie. I mean, I say I've been doing this nearly 30 years now, and I don't want to be doing a spell that involves 57 different ingredients that I have to order from across the other side of the globe that cost loads of money mainly because I don't want to spend the money, but also because I don't want to impact the environment by having to have it flown here. And because I am a working wife and mother and I don't have hours and hours to spend setting up great big ceremonies and working hours and hours of, of um, complicated rituals. I forgot Gypsy's, Gypsy's Air Crypt. Gypsy Reiki Willow Moon is uh, one of the Kitchen Witch Hearth Guardians and she works with crystals. It's rainbow moonstone. Oh, fantastic. That That's lovely. Um, Michelle, I suffer bad with anxiety. We'll try this. I will, um, you know, it's all in here. Anxiety and, and low self-esteem, worry, guilt, all sorts of things. And I've been there and I've done it. And on occasion, I'm still doing it because sometimes life lessons do come and hit us lots of times before we take notice. But you know it, it's it's a personal journey but you have to want to make the you've got to make the decision to want to change it but then it's baby steps just set tiny weeny little goals but i do explain it all in the book but yes if you want to ask joanne in particular if you want to ask me any questions afterwards do feel free to message me i might not get back to you today because it's sunday and we're going to have a self-care evening with my family got to make that time but I will answer you. So please do feel free to message me if you've got any more questions, because I'm very well aware that it's now an hour and a quarter and people have lives and places to get to. I, you guys are absolutely fantastic for supporting me and sticking with me. I can't thank you enough, really. Um, thank you, Lydia. You're very welcome. Xenia, two complicated spells and rituals make me procrastinate it. I also think the more complicated a spell is, the, the more likely it is to go off a bit haywire. If you start adding all sorts of stuff, then it has, you know, it can go wrong. Uh, Heather, looking forward to getting my book. Heather Dewhurst is one of our very lovely Hearth Guardians as well. Thank you for being here. You guys rock. Um, thank you. Everyone's saying thank you. You're all absolutely fantastic. Karen, historically, witches used every day, every day items they had on hand, simple and basic. No online shopping. Would have been a little bit lost without online shopping in the last few months, but you're absolutely right, Karen. I am a kitchen witch. I use whatever's in the kitchen cupboards or is in the garden or I find that when I'm out and about. It has to be basic everyday items because they've got just as much magic. The pebble, the shell, just as much magic as the really expensive crystal. So use what works for you. Um, absolutely. Uh, oh, Gypsy, love to you, lovely lady, too. Uh, Joanne, just message me on, on Facebook. Um, absolutely no problem with that. Or my email is on my website. Entirely up to you, whichever's easiest. Uh, Leslie, do you think you should hold off doing a spell if you're feeling a bit down? Does your mood affect that spell? Yep. If you're really angry, don't cast the spell because it's going to be really tainted and you will regret it. Uh, obviously, if you are struggling with anxiety or stress or one of the other issues, you are going to be feeling a bit down anyway. But if you're working a spell to help yourself get out of that, then that's fine. But yeah, if you're working a spell for something else or for someone else, working a prosperity spell or anything like that, and you're not quite right, it's not going to have that same power behind it because you're not really going to be focused. If you are working to dig yourself out of your issue, then you are going to be focused on it. Um, thank you, lovely people. Everyone's saying thank you. You guys are so amazing. Thank you so much. Um, Diane, you make witchcraft accessible to us. Oh, bless you. Well, Chimio, that's me. Part of being a witch, part of working with witchcraft is sharing. We, if we share what we learn with each other, then everyone benefits from it. So, you know, that's kind of a no-brainer to me, really. Um, thank you, Tessa. Oh, just thank you, guys. You are, yes, I am every Friday morning, 9 a.m. UK time. I am, I am here doing chats about various things. If you want me to talk about anything in particular, just message me. Um, if you want to catch up with the replays, they are on this Facebook page and they're also on my YouTube um, page as well, YouTube channel as well. Um, 
thank you thank you thank you everybody blessings to you all you are all super amazing um oh guys you'll make me cry on camera if you keep on like this <laughs> Um, it is my absolute pleasure to share with you and to talk with you. Um, Petronella, check out the replay if possible. Yes, give it a few seconds after I finished and the replay will come up on the Facebook page. Um, Sue, Fridays are good too. Thank you. Yes, we're going to have to cover menopause in a chat as well, aren't we? Because I think that's something that's very important to lots of people. But yep, that's what today was about. Curative magic. It's a big old book. It really is. Um, it's available from the 1st of September if you order from Amazon, but I know some other places have been sending it out already. I have a small handful of signed copies on the Kitchen Witch website. Um, it's quite heavy, so I'm afraid that the postage is a little bit, but um, a tell a book on menopause. <laughs> you could write a whole series of books on menopause, I think. Uh, Debbie, Kitchen Witch School is brilliant and accessible. When I first came to witchcraft, the long, complicated spells and rituals put me off. Yeah, your books are so easy to follow and helpful. Oh, bless you, uh, Eva. My dirty lesson should be in your inbox tonight. I will check it tomorrow, Eva. Um, thank you, guys. You are fantastic. Curative magic, out soon. Flower magic, <laughs> out as well. Uh, all of my other books available from all the usual places. Catch me on a Friday morning. Catch myself and the lovely Hearth Guardians over on the Kitchen Witch Coven Facebook group. If you want to learn and share and be supported by a group of the loveliest people, pop on over to our Kitchen Witch Coven Facebook group. We've got so, we're so lucky to have such a lovely group of people on there, particularly if you're just learning. They love answering questions and helping people out with all the questions as well. So, um, <laughs> Leslie's got heart care buttons going mad. I haven't, it's not me. <laughs> um, again, any questions, let me know. Uh, flower magic, how I miss flower magic is the um, oracle cards. All flowers taken, all the photographs of the cards are taken from my own garden. So I've worked personally with each flower. Um, oracle deck, the usual kind of 48 cards, but it's all from my garden photos from my garden and everything that i've worked with so you've got the meanings but there's also magical uses as well in there but again available from all the usual places um joanne on a journey searching for ways to connect with people this community seems very friendly now joanne do hop on over to kitchen witch coven facebook group because they are lovely lovely people uh, they are the, the links just appeared as if by magic that's the elves working in the background <laughs> um I'm going to leave you to it because, you know, otherwise you'll all be going to bed, really. Um, <laughs> thank you so much to everybody for joining me. Um, any questions, say, don't be alone. Don't get stuck, whether it's witchcraft or anything. We're here. Myself and the Kitchen Witch Gang are here to help um, and support if we possibly can. So thank you guys so much for joining me. You are all absolute stars. I could have talked for hours. It is quite an interesting subject that is very, very much a personal one for me. I don't share a huge amount of personal stuff in here because because it was edited out, but because <laughs> it would have been, you know, this sort of size. But I have experienced all of the stuff that's in this book. So I know from personal experience that it's hard to deal with. But hopefully this provides some sort of solution and some help along the way. So thank you all guys very much. Big hugs to you all. Have a fantastic rest of the day and a fabulous week. And thank you so much.